Hey yo, it's Brian here. Today, talking about the San Francisco 49ers. In this one, looking at free agency players on our roster that I believe will either stay or go in 2021. There's a lot of free agents for the 49ers, as you all know. There's about 30 or 40 of them that are scheduled to be one. So, this is a pretty good time to talk about certain players, notable players that I will be making predictions on whether they will be staying or going. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. Nothing too crazy for me. Going to be doing this audio only. And if this is a little bit longer video, then it's going to be a little bit longer because I'm going to be talking about quite a bit of free agents and making may maybe quick or long predictions on each certain player. So, there you have it, you guys. Let's get this video started. But before I do, as always, do all the cool stuff. Like and subscribe. That definitely helps me out a lot. I know that's always repetitive to say that pretty much every start of video, but... At the same time, it does help out a lot, help this channel out a lot. Let's spread this channel. All 49er faithful, 49er fans, even football fans in general, I do welcome anybody that's not a 49er fan. If they want to be a 49er fan, that's cool. But if not, they want to just hear us just talking, then that's whatever. But anyways, let's get this video started. 49ers, free agents, predictions for them. Are they going to be staying or going? First up for me. Trent Williams, I think he's the most interesting case out of pretty much all the free agents. He is the unknown X factor for the 49ers and company. Williams, I think he stated that he will not take a hometown discount, which which is fine because he does definitely deserves a big contract, whether it's from the 49ers or somewhere else. He has to leverage over the 49ers just because of the fact, I mean, when he's not on the field, they're absolutely terrible with Justin School as the starting left tackle when he was out due to illness and injuries and what have you but Williams I believe the 49ers they're trying to do doing the due diligence in order to keep him on the 49er team and keeping the offensive line a little bit more stable so he's probably the biggest priority out of everybody on this list and you know what I definitely agree with him if this is the case they really need to stabilize that O-line and Williams did a pretty good job for the most part in 2020 considering that you know no workouts or anything like that he didn't play a down of football in 2019 he did a great job along with Lincoln Thomas on the left side. So Williams, he should be a big priority. My prediction, I think he will be staying in San Francisco to make a big deal for him. And they're probably going to clear some cap space in order just to get him back in a 49 uniform. He is getting a little, little bit up there in age, but at the same time, you still got to keep a guy that is really productive and a guy that can really lead your offensive line to greatness and Williams is a big backbone to it if they can draft within the right side the right guard right ta t tackle potentially then this could be a very potent offensive line like it was last year in 2019 when they went to the Super Bowl so Williams I believe he'll be staying and I believe the 49ers will do their diligence and their damnness to keep him on the 49er team next up to talk about another person that I believe will be staying in San Francisco I would say Jason Verrett cornerback I think they should give him another chance to be honest with you a lot of people are pretty much in agreement with me he did a great job in 2020 he got gotten through a lot of adversity beforehand. 2019, he had that game against Pittsburgh. It was not the greatest game of his life. But other than that, a lot of injuries. And he hasn't been on the field at all pretty much his whole career in the NFL. Not just with us, but also in San Diego. But this year in 2020, he got his opportunity when a lot of players went in and out of the lineup at the defensive back position. And he really stabilized it a lot. He had... An awesome year, in my opinion. It should have been a Pro Bowl year, to be honest with you. But, hey, people don't know who he is outside of San Francisco as much. Maybe Charter fans, but other than that, everybody outside the league are, you know, mesmerized by Tredarius White and other players. But, yeah, Verrett, I believe he'll be staying with us in San Francisco. I think they should give him another two- or three-year deal. It's not going to be the biggest contract because of the fact he does have injury history, and the 49ers don't really want to take chances on that, especially now with D Ford. You really don't want to just get too many injured players on your roster and players that are not available to play. But Verrett, for the most part, he's been able to stay healthy in 2020 and I believe if he can just continue to improve in a little bit more from his previous year to this year then I think he's going to be a great con contributor to the Fortnite so I believe he'll be staying and he's an invaluable part of the defense for the 49ers and also Richard Sherman's probably going to be leaving for free agency and I'll be talking about him in a second so two guys I believe will be staying in some way shape or form another guy to look forward to is Kyle Juszczyk he's also a next factor a guy that uh, we really don't know if he's going to be staying or going to the New York Jets with Robert Sala. I'm pretty sure that's the big place he would love to go if he can't make a deal with the 49ers. There's been some preliminary talks from all accounts between the 49ers and Ushek's camp. I, I think he should be a, a contributor to the 49ers in 2021. I said he was a very important part for the past couple of years on the offense. I wish Kyle would use him more in the passing game. He does, but not as much as I thought he would when he did sign with 
the 49ers in 2017. He deserves another opportunity to be with his team. And, I mean, you know what? When you have a Kyle Shanahan-friendly running fullback offensive system, you want to stay in San Francisco. But I'm pretty sure the biggest deal breaker is money. So if he wants to chase the money, I don't blame him at all. The Jets, Robert Sala, Mike Mafleur, they have a lot of money in New York. So if they want to offer him a big contract, he can go there. Or could stay in with San Francisco and keep that team going alive and he'll be a big part of the offense in 2021 so my prediction for me personally I think they kind of work a deal out with him but if not then I would not be surprised if he walks away in free agency but I think they're going to do their due diligence for this one in particular because you check is a very part of a very important part of Kyle's offense and it really comes and goes what he does on that fullback position also as a pass catching blocker running game I mean he the, the, he's really a big reason why the offensive running game is so successful Raheem Mostert Jeff Wilson Jr. the blocking game he's a big reason for it so I'm pretty sure Kyle Shanahan wants him back and I definitely would bring him back if I'm the 49ers if I'm John Lynch and company so three guys so far to keep on the list a couple of guys that I believe will be gone definitely Richard Sherman I think he's just already said that he's not going to be with the 49ers anymore and not surprising at all I'm pretty sure he wants to chase maybe a little bit more big money in free agency maybe just go to a new team maybe go back to Seattle that would be interesting there but I don't know I mean that that a, a couple of teams that you can go to is probably the Raiders or the Jets those two are probably the most popular options for him in my opinion but we'll see what happens happens then but Richard he will probably not be in the 49er uniform in 2021 so if he does leave in free agency best of luck to him wherever he goes and thank you for your time in San Francisco because he was a big reason why we made it to the Super Bowl in 2019 although it wasn't the best performance of his life but he was that shutdown cornerback that we all knew he could be from his time in Seattle so I thought he did a really good job in his time in San Francisco and you know maybe it's time to move on to other ventures to another team another guy that I believe will be gone in San Francisco is probably Tevin Coleman. I know I stated in my past couple of videos that he might be with the 49ers. He might not. But when you have other guys emerging as great running backs, I mean, you already have Mostert. You have Jeff Wilson Jr. who's emerging as a number two running back. You have Jermichael Hasty still in the wings. They can probably draft somebody later in the draft. I mean, that's pretty easy. I mean, they can find people from like the fifth, sixth undrafted players. It's pretty easy for the 49ers in particular to find a running back. And Coleman's getting up there in age. He hasn't been healthy all year long in 2020. So I expect them to be gone in the 49er uniform in 2021. But you know what? It is what it is. We got to move on. And I can't really say anything else. So Coleman, I always thank him for his contributions. I was a big fan of his when he came to San Francisco. And, you know, for the most part, when he's healthy, he could be a great player. But I think Andrews is going to catch up to him. And I think he will be somewhere else in another, another uniform. Another guy that's probably going to be gone, most likely gone, is running back Jared McKinnon. This one's probably not surprising at all. I'm pretty sure you guys saw the Instagram live video with Debo Samuel saying that he's not going to come back to the 49ers publicly. And you know what? Not... No love lost there, to be honest with you, because McKinnon, the very disappointing player, and a lot of unfortunate things happened for him, injuries towards ACL in practice before week one in 2018, I believe. 2019, he didn't even play at all during the Super Bowl run. 2020, he, didn't, he showed a little bit of promise, but I think the injuries really held him back, and he was very slow coming out of the tackles. He was didn't have that burst like Jeff Wilson Jr. or Mostert would. It was just really disappointing in 2020 to watch him play later on in the season, and he couldn't be the number one running back option anymore. And the 49ers, I'm pretty sure they're regretting that contract that they gave him, what, five-year, $45 million dollars. I think that was the contract when he did sign with the 49ers. So I expect him to be gone in 2021, and we'll see what happens there. But best of luck to him wherever he does after San Francisco. Quarterbacks, pretty interesting here. You got C.J. Beathard and Nick Mullins, I believe, will be free agents. Well, C.J. Beathard in particular, will he be back? I'm pretty sure he will be. Kyle Shanahan's a big fan of his, I'm pretty sure, because he did draft him in the third round, essentially. I mean, that probably was not a John Lynch pick. That was more of a Kyle Shanahan pick. And has he been working out for the 49ers? Probably not. But he does show a little bit of promise. But other than that, he's more of a backup, even third stringer quarterback. He's definitely not a starter. So if you want to give the backup job, they already gave it to Josh Rosen, I'm assuming, for this upcoming season, Jimmy Garoppolo, assuming that they don't drop the quarterback, he'll be the number one quarterback. And Beathard, I'm pretty sure he's going to be back in the, thir in the third stringer 
relief form, I guess you want to call it, from 2020 last year. So he did a great job again in a game against the Arizona Cardinals, and mad respect to him for that. But we'll see if he does stay and go. But I believe he'll be staying in San Francisco as another quarterback for this team for depth. Um, let's see some other guys to talk about. Uh, Jordan Reed, he should be an interesting case. I think they can work out a deal with him. I know you know he's had a lot of concussion issues, but 2020 he's been able to skate away from it. He did have that ankle injury in the game against the New York Giants around week three or week four. So you know that turf was really bad for the 49ers. But other than that, he's been able to stay healthy and he did a pretty good job considering you know he was coming back to football like Williams. And if he can get another season in 2021, be part of Kyle Shanahan again with George Kittle, it could be an unstoppable force. I was very excited to see this lineup definitely in 2020, but due to him. And Kittle being in and out of the lineup, we didn't really see it that much. So hopefully Shanahan, if he does come back, they do give him an opportunity to to play that two tight end system because I think they can dominate definitely in the um, NFL in 2021. But I believe he'll get like a one or two year deal, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be on borrowed time because he, you know, with the, all the injuries, all the concussions that he had, I mean, it's, it's even a miracle that he even wanted to come back to playing football in the first place. So. You know, to get another opportunity to play in 2021, that would be awesome for me and for everybody in San Francisco. So I think they'll work on a deal with them. Not too expensive. And plus, I mean, the way he played in Washington years ago, he can come back to that form, especially with this team being really good and playoff contenders. I, I think he'll flourish definitely in 2021 with the 49ers. A couple more guys I want to talk about. Another guy to talk. Hmm, who to see? Who to see? Kendrick Bourne. I think that's another interesting case. I honestly, I honestly don't think he's going to be staying in San Francisco. I think he's going to be going to the New York Jets with Michael Fleury and company. I don't know. I think with the way the 49ers receivers are, he's a very good third down guy, but he still has a lot of drops. I know he's been improving every year, but at the same time, he can still have some of those wonky drops for the most part. I mean, you have other guys that you can go to anyways. You have the draft. You also have Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. Those two are 1A, 1B receivers. You have Richie James. I believe he'll be part of the offense even more. Kyle, please give more opportunities so really Bourne might be the odd man out in this situation and I'm and I wouldn't be surprised at all if he does walk away in free agency if the 49ers don't give him a deal anyway, shape and form. So I believe he'll be gone, to be honest with you, in 2021. I do love me some Bourne. I think he's done some awesome things for the 49ers. He's had some clutch catches. I remember that third and 16 in the Saturday night game against the Rams in 2019. That it was awesome to watch right there. And, you know, if he does leave, then best of luck to him wherever he goes. But I'd love to see him back in San Francisco. But just the way I see the receiving core operate right now, and he's probably going to be out asking some money from the 49ers I don't believe he'll be back with us in 2021 but I could be wrong I probably am wrong but you never know I think he can make something work in San Francisco but I think he's gonna be gone in 2021 another guy to talk about K1 Williams nickel cornerback he definitely should be staying in San Francisco he is a big part of the defense nickel whatever you want to call it, nickel cornerback nickel defense five defensive backs he's a very invaluable parts of the defense I'm pretty sure the Lynch and company are going to be finding their way to bring him back in some way shape and form he does deserve to come back in San Francisco I believe he will be back in 2021 who else to talk about um, uh, Western Bridgeburg, Ben Garland, they're probably going to be gone. Ben Garland's a free agent coming up. I, I believe they'll find somebody else. I believe they'll get Alex Mack if they can. But other than that, I don't th- I don't think he comes to San Francisco. Or I'm, I'm talking about Garland. I think he comes back to San Francisco for this upcoming season. Who else to talk about? Akella Witherspoon. That's a very interesting case to talk about Witherspoon. I mean, he's been struggling a lot for the past year or two. Probably his whole career for the most part. He's had some flashy moments. He's had some great moments. But... He just hasn't really broken that mold into being that number two cornerback, in my opinion. I think looking at him overall, it's been a very disappointing one. He probably did save himself in free agency by having that awesome game against the Arizona Cardinals. I think he picked up Kyler Murray in that one. It was the game in Arizona when we were playing in Arizona. Uh, He did an awesome job in that game. So he might have been able to keep his job in San Francisco. But I don't know. That's a really interesting case. I believe... He will probably be back. I'm, I know Kyle is probably a big fan of his some way, shape, and form. And we'll see if they do keep him. But I believe he will be back in a 49er uniform. He's some great. He's a good depth guy. And if they have an injury issue, then you can plug him in 
and be a great role player. I know it's kind of weird to say that. I know Witherspoon probably doesn't like to hear that, but at the same time, he can't be the starting cornerback in my opinion because he's made a lot of mistakes, and you know those mistakes, he it's hard to come back from. To be honest with you, I think the biggest problem with him is confidence, and he doesn't really have a lot of confidence. Maybe he did after that Arizona game, but other than that. He's been pretty shot up, you know, ever since last year he got hurt early on in 2019. So, Witherspoon, I expect him to be back, but I expect him not to be the starter for the defensive back position in 2021. That's pretty much it, you guys. That's pretty much the big guys that I wanted to talk about, in particular on this whole free agency list. You have other guys to talk, look at. Also, you have Ziggy Anza, who else on this list? You have Deion Jordan, just the guys that are very limited players, so they might not come back. They might come back. Emmanuel Mosley, he's a um, restricted free agent, so they can probably find a way to bring him back. But these guys were mostly unrestricted free agents. And a lot of the guys, I think they can sign, but I know a lot of people, they're probably going to be walking away. And some of the players... Would I be surprised if they walk away? Probably not because I know other teams, they have way more money to give than the 49ers do right now. And, you know, we'll see what it leads us to. Yep, that's it, guys. Please let me know what you guys think about the whole free agency list. Who do you think is going to be staying? Who do you think is going to be going? I like what you guys are saying in the comments below. If you guys like this, please like and subscribe. That's going to help me a lot. I'll be catching you guys up probably tomorrow on a Thursday, if not a Friday. Bye, guys. Love y'all. Y'all have a great rest of your night. Go Niners all day.